save 10% with my code BOBBY10. Just kidding guys, today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. Bismillah. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to watch a UK gangster reveals the real reason why prisoners convert to Islam. This video is created yet again by the amazing channel Muslim Convert Stories. I picked this particular video because I have friends that ended up in prison and they told me the same. Islam, faith, is extremely strong within the prison system. People get the chance to think about their past. They can think and reflect about what they have done, where it all went wrong, why they are in this particular situation. And being cut off from all the social media, all the outside input, they return to God. And this is where they find Islam. I'm very curious to hear the gangster's perspective in today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. A former gangster, Darren Gee, gave an interview to Sean Atwood where he talks about prisons in the UK. He says that there is only one strength in the prison life, and that is the Islamic strength. There's only one strength in the whole of the prison system in this country. It's one strength, and no one's gonna master it, and that's the is Islamic strength. Islam is on the rise in prisons in UK, USA, Australia, and many more countries, and it is not by chance. Extensive research has been conducted on the reasons behind these growing number of conversions. The Code of Conduct Prisoners come from a background of crime and chaos. Their yes. poor decisions and life choices land them into deep trouble. Exactly right. Once incarcerated, they have to adjust to the strict routine of the prison. This is hard for them, as they are used to living reckless lives. But since Islam offers... Generally, in my neighborhood, I saw this effect of the prison system being very, very positive for many people. However, I saw the same positivity with either sport or the army. So in both examples, you need to follow a strict routine. You need discipline. You need to wake up early. You need to pursue your goals. And this is the exact opposite of the thug life, where you just wake up whenever you want. You wake and bake. You consume all kinds of drugs. You are involved in all kinds of degeneracy. Eat what you you want meet who you want etc etc you name it and this is why the prison system can bring about such a change a strict code of conduct and a structured prayer schedule a lot of converts are drawn to the predictability and routine the religion offers the five prayers the fasting months 
and the clear distinction between for me it's not necessarily the predictability itself but a routine brings you to success it is always the same back in the day when i was bodybuilding i had a routine i have to wake up at 7 a.m drink my whey protein shake then go down into the kitchen prepare my breakfast then head off to work during work every two hours i would have to consume rice and chicken and broccoli and then finally work is over now we can work out when other people go back home sit on the couch no now we are headed to the gym work out in the gym post workout shake back home eat rice and chicken prepare all the foods for the other day then have a massive protein shake of 80 grams off to sleep to catch my eight hour window wake up do it all over again so for many people this sounds boring and yes maybe even predictable but the point of the story is nothing is predictable in this life all control lays with god so at least you're putting in the work and doing everything humanly possible to keep you on the straight path right and wrong help prisoners to adjust to the discipline of prison life this is much welcomed at a time when inmates are reevaluating their choices and trying to make better choices for the future. Yeah, exactly right. Brotherhood. Islam offers a sense of brotherhood and community that many inmates may not have experienced before. There is no concept of race or color in Islam. There is no discrimination. Everyone is equal in the eyes of Allah. And because prisons can be isolating and lonely, converting to Islam can provide inmates with a supportive group of fellow believers. Everyone is allowed in, no matter where they're from or what their background is. Darren Gee further describes that there is no hierarchy in the prisons anymore. There's just one group that runs the show, and that is the Muslims. There's no hierarchy in the prison system. There's one group that run the prison system, and it's the Muslim fraternity. Whether you like it or not, it's fact. He believes that the reason why Muslims have come to the top is because of their solidarity. He talks about how if there is a situation where if one white person is being attacked by six Muslims, no one will come to his help. But if one Muslim is being attacked by six other individuals, all the Muslims will come to his rescue, whether they know him or not. If you're Just by this standard alone, Islam will flourish. It is very simple, man. When you stand up, for your ideas, you're defending your ideas, then those ideas will survive. It is so extremely simplistic, people don't understand it. People nowadays, they want to live and let live. But if you don't stand up for your ideologies, and if you're not intolerant of other ideologies, then your ideology will get demolished. It is extremely simplistic. Yet again, please think about this. So if you have any interest in furthering your ideologies, you will have to stand up for it and moreover you will need people that stand up for it as well but in jail and you've got a white boy getting attacked by six muslims none of them's helping him even if you know more don't know the white boy no one's helping him but if you've got a muslim boy getting battered by six individuals whether these muslims know him or not they're going in and helping him and that's where it's that's where their strength is he says that he finds this very admirable and that this yeah, kind of because now he defined it yet again by race. He's talking about a white boy. I do understand why he uses this example. It paints a picture, but it is true, as they mentioned in the beginning, that Islam does not distinguish. So if a white boy chooses to become a Muslim, he's part of the brotherhood as well. It is not about race whatsoever. And this is why the white nationalist ideology is failing as well, because it's not a transcendent idea. It is just bound to skin but we all gonna die and you're not taking your skin with you even during this lifetime your skin is decaying it gets wrinkly and what not you're not taking this body with you to the heavens so think about this logically why would you worship and why would you put so much emphasis and stress onto your outward appearance islam goes beyond that islam transcends that it is about worshiping one god alone no matter where you come from loyalty and strength is missing in other religions for now i, admire that. I don't admire that to protect the nonsense but what i do admire is the loyalty and the strength and the you know the brotherhood and that's that's what's missing in other religions at the moment is the brotherhood the islamic faith's got and that's why it's taken over
redemption. Yeah, they're trying to revive this brotherhood within Christianity, but I simply do not see it. You can let me know in the comment section if you are Christian. Have you experienced that brotherhood within Christianity? I certainly have not, and I don't believe that it will recover. Islam offers the promise of forgiveness and redemption. Many inmates may have committed crimes that they regret and are now seeking a way to make amends. They're looking for a way to lessen their pain and guilt. Islam provides that opportunity. Absolutely it gives sure. them a clean slate. Islam's emphasis on repentance and forgiveness can offer hope in a path towards a better future. Once people realize that by accepting Islam, they will be forgiven by Allah Almighty, they find it easier to forgive themselves as well. This True. gives them Powerful. courage to try and turn their lives around. This point is also put forward by Darren Gee. He says that once you repent and ask for forgiveness, you're welcome to the Islamic Brotherhood wholeheartedly. Now, some scousers, majority of them, convert because of the crimes. See, in the faith of Islam, they will accept anyone into that faith as long as you repent your sins. In a famous documentary, The Honest Struggle, Darren Davis, now known as Sadiq Khan, also talks about his conversion to Islam in the prison. He explains how, when things got messed up with his life, oh, so he, he reached out to the Muslim brothers in the oh, prison, and they okay. gave him a copy of the Quran. I was wondering, Soon, I Sadiq he stayed could feel Krishna, himself feeling peace and redemption. He felt free, isolation. It could also be said that once people get stuck in a prison, they no longer have access to the life outside. Of course. They have few things to distract them, and they get a chance to ponder over the bigger questions. Who created them? What is the purpose of their life? And how can they improve themselves? Islam answers a lot of these questions and gives a new meaning to their lives. Sadiq Davis talks about how his life slowed down in prison and he got a chance to get in touch with his true self. Once he started studying the Quran, things started to get clear, and his life started to get straightened. To he said that events, once yeah. he said his Shahada, it became clear to him that in his previous life, he was living contrary to what he was created to do. Hit Fear and insecurity. Prison is no doubt a stressful place to be in. You're broken, in fear and in despair. You quite literally hit rock bottom. And when people reach that low level of life, they realize that they need direction and they need something to lift them up. They need something to help them cope with the fears the prison life has to offer. For these people, Islam offers a great deal of comfort and security. Once they submit themselves to a higher power, they feel much more equipped to tackle life in the prison. Power. Once they submit to Allah, okay. all their fears go away. These Rod. reasons, despite sounding reasonable, have been criticized by the West. <laughs> in a report that was published in the UK, it was stated that some of the non-Muslims were put under immense pressure to convert. They were threatened and faced violence. This report further states This goes directly against Islam. You cannot be forced into accepting Islam. It has to come from you or rather from God. Guidance comes from Allah alone and therefore you cannot be forced into that decision. There is no compulsion within religion. So this is fake news. That in some prisons, there is evidence that a group of Muslim prisoners operate as a gang under the guise of religion. They had little or no interest in the faith, true. but saw that being a member of this gang presented an opportunity to them to be anti-authority, violent, sure, sure. and intimidating. That I believe. Some experts suggest that the conversion of non-Muslims to Islam may be a way for them to assert their identity and rebel against the dominant culture within the prison system. For some, it may be a way to resist the oppression they feel from the system that has incarcerated them. Some experts also believe that the reason for converting also include better food during Ramadan and getting time out of cells to attend prayers. Whether or not inmates accept Islam due to spiritual reasons or their selfish needs, we shouldn't be the one to judge them. No. Only Allah knows exactly. what's in their hearts and how sincere they are to their faith. We should only think the best of them and welcome them 
with open arms. We should pray that Allah keeps them on the straight path and bring more people into the folds of Islam. Ameen. But for Ameen. Muslims Beautiful who have already tasted the sweetness of Iman, these conversions are a testament to the transformative power of the Islamic faith. These conversions give us confidence that our religion is indeed the absolute truth and our Lord grants forgiveness and a second chance to whoever he wills. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. All right, and this is it for today's video. As I said in the beginning, I can relate because I had friends that entered the prison system. Watching this at first, I thought that he encountered Muslims within the prison system, but did not convert himself. But ultimately, this is exactly what he did. He became a Muslim. And of course, I understand that this takes away the fear if you truly submit your will to God. Because what does it mean? Up until that point that you entered the prison, system you were doing all kinds of criminalities all kinds of degeneracies and what not so your own ego brought you into that situation your own ego brought you into prison because you relied upon yourself because you made yourself god this is why you're there and if you truly submit and you let go of your ego you let go of yourself of your past self now you can embrace the truth now you can embrace god and with that trust god as well that he will bring you through this hardship of prison and moreover get you out of it as well and put you on the straight path all right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys and as always may god bless you all much love and peace